target that major U.S. retailer losing billions of dollars in market value over the last couple of weeks. Well, according to new reports, many Americans are about to lose their local Target stores. Every month, more Target store closings are being announced as the company faces one of its biggest crises since it was founded six decades ago. The retail chain is in a very poor financial shape, with sales on pace to be the worst they have ever been, one expert said. Revenue growth is also going down, while its stock has plunged to the lowest level since 2020. And even though the chain is blaming retail theft, as the reason why even more stores are going to be shuttered this week. Bloomberg exposed that there's a somber reason behind the closures. Target's business is crumbling down, and the latest data will show you precisely what's going on. For a company as big as Target to lose 90% of its profits in a single quarter, something must be really wrong with the way executives are conducting the business. Before that happened, losses were already over 50% per quarter. And afterwards, the retail giant continued to be hammered as fewer customers purchased its discretionary goods. Up until this day, Target sales haven't significantly recovered. Third quarter figures revealed that the retailer is still dealing with worrying challenges. On Tuesday, the company said that inflation and escalation in retail theft cases have walloped same-store sales again, resulting in disappointing financial results for investors. Mike Baker, D.A. Davidson's senior research analyst, forecasted that Target's financial health is likely to deteriorate even further in quarter four. It's hard to know if the worst was last quarter or this quarter or what exactly it's going to be, but we think we're close to the worst," he said during an interview with Yahoo Finance. For the past two decades, the company's margins remained between 5.5% and 7.5%, Baker explains. It was really never worse than 5.5%, he said, but in the past 12 months, they dropped to about 4.5 to 4%, and in the past quarter, margins fell to 3%. This year, they're going to be the worst they've been, you know, possibly ever as a public company, Baker stressed. In quarter three, the outlook became even gloomier, with consumer traffic trends significantly worsening. Target's most recent financial report showed that guest visits declined by 5% year over year. That big slump was the main factor behind a surprising 5% drop in comparable store sales during the quarter. And although performance has been going from bad to worse for quite some time now, the company's executives have continued to overstate Target's profit potential in the past few months, filling investors with hopes only to crash them down after new data is online. Industry analysts claim that the boycott backed by some consumers and political figures during the spring is still impacting the retail chain's sales growth. Like Anheuser-Busch, Target has been put at the center of cultural conflicts being debated by conservatives and liberals. The most recent crisis happened a few months ago when the company listed LGBTQ products that were not approved by some groups. While Republicans criticized the beloved store for going woke, Democrats blasted the retailer's response to the crisis. Even though most boycotts don't work, there are signs that Target has been losing thousands of customers. In essence, executives managed to irritate the chain's entire customer base, and they're certainly suffering the consequences. Back then, sales declined by 4.9%, while its comparable same-store sales plunged by 5.4%. Now, its total revenue of over $24.5 billion came lower than analysts' forecasts by over $400 million. Worse, Target's profitability has lagged other retailers. Its forward enterprise value to earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization ratio stood at minus 10.39%, 
while Walmart has plus 3.75%, Costco has 8.53%. One more time, the corporation cited retail shrink as one of the main drivers of the losses. In the past few years, shoplifting rates have been continuously rising. According to the National Retail Federation, retail theft has soared by 20% so far in 2023, leading to over $112 billion in losses. Meanwhile, Target says it's seen a jump of 120% in organized theft cases at its stores, which led the company to shut down hundreds of locations and boost its store security, a highly expensive process. The retailer grabbed national headlines when it blamed inventory losses on worsening theft again, announcing the closure of dozens of locations, with nine of them expected to occur this week. The stores are located in four states. Both landlords and local officials say that law enforcement data does not support Target's stated reasoning. When the company announced the closures would happen, executives said it was because of crime. We cannot continue operating these stores because theft and organized retail crime are threatening the safety of our team and guests and contributing to unsustainable business performance, Target said in a statement. But when Bloomberg and Fox News investigators looked at law enforcement dispatch data from stores around Portland, the numbers told a very different story. According to official data from several locations around Portland, all of the stores that are being closed this week have lower property crime rates than other stores in the area. That means the retail giant is not eliminating the locations based on real theft risk as it said it was. That isn't happening just in Portland. In Seattle, where multiple stores are also going dark, the Seattle Times found that the locations with the most calls for law enforcement officers were actually staying open. An investigation by Business Insider found crime data also didn't line up with planned store closures in San Francisco and New York. On Tuesday, the discounter announced it's closing three stores in the Bay Area for the same alleged reason. Last week, a Target on Folsom Street location went viral earlier this year for its aisles of lockdown merchandise. The store is no longer in operation now. In contrast, offense rates near Target's Mission Street store are far higher, official data shows. The company is shuttering locations in Oakland too. Mayor Sheng Thao wrote in a statement on Monday, I understand the challenges that Target is facing in cities across the country, and I am disappointed by the news of its closure in Oakland. My goal is to continue working in partnership with members of the business community to help ensure their safety and success in our city. At the same time, lots of customers were surprised to find out that the oldest Target store in Manhattan would go out of business this week. To Geneva Cohn, a neighborhood resident who's shopped at the store since she was in middle school, said she couldn't believe it when she saw the sign at the store's door. Honestly, I think I'm being shocked, she said. I always come here, so where am I going to find the nearest target? The justification for closing was the same. However, according to some local landlords who spent years courting the giant retailer, the decision pointed to more considerations at play. The store in question was Target's first ever Manhattan location. With more than 100,000 square feet of selling space, the location opened long before the retailer figured out to be profitable in big cities. It had to veer from its big box playbook and build smaller footprints. Now, thousands of locals will lose the only discount store nearby. Neil Saunders, a retail analyst at Global Data, noted that the store was just too big. The company is probably not generating the revenue they need. That probably combines to make that store not economically viable. Publicly available stats tell a more complex story than the one told by executives. With data disproving the company's claim that incidents of shoplifting or robberies were the cause of the shutdowns, the experts suggest that organized retail theft 
has become a convenient cover for internal problems such as bloated inventories, heavy discounting, and employee theft. Shrink has been going up, but sometimes it's very difficult to unpack how much is down to theft and how much is down to internal retailer issues and stumbles, Saunders said. Shrink does take money off margins, we know that, but there's too much opacity in the way it's being reported and it's being partly used as an excuse for generally bad performance, he highlighted. The analyst noted that Target in particular has a fragmented supply chain and is not always the best at managing its own inventory. In other words, it's very easy for things to be misallocated and misaccounted for within that. I'm sure bundled in with their number, there's a lot of things where Target has just lost stuff, broken stuff, put stuff in the wrong stores, put it in the wrong location or can't find it. It would be more honest to admit that the mass closings are a result of internal struggles and financial issues. But the truth is that Target cannot afford to spook investors even more this year. So far, all executives have said was that the stores could not remain open due to safety concerns. Despite our efforts, unfortunately, we continue to face fundamental challenges to operating these stores safely and successfully, the company wrote. They're trying their best to maintain the appearance of normalcy, even as everything continues to fall apart. Unlike many of its biggest competitors like Costco and Walmart, Target stock has crashed by over 58% from its all-time high. The unprecedented decline was caused by a combination of various factors. For one, while Target is a beloved discount retailer, its price range was still above some of its rivals, and its limited grocery offering pushed more people to the likes of Walmart and dollar stores like Dollar General and Family Dollar. Target has an enterprise valued earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization ratio of 9 compared to Walmart's 13. Other metrics, including a comprehensive discount cash flow model, show that the company is clearly undervalued in the market at the moment. As the chart illustrates, the retailer has underperformed its key retail substantially in the past few years. Recent problems were only added on top of the company's messy pile of failures. These headwinds have made Target one of the cheapest retail stocks in the US. The holiday season isn't likely to make things better. Target could further contribute to the weak demand trends by offering a very slim selection in categories like furniture and apparel. Low inventory might leave the retailer unprepared for rebounding demand too, causing it to miss out on sales during the quarter four period. In November, the company will report the rest of its quarter three results and investors will certainly be watching that announcement closely for signs of further weaknesses. At some point, executives will not be able to continue to mask the retailer's performance, and the dozens of store closings a week might escalate to hundreds when shareholders realize that Target will never be the way it was before this downturn started. What are your thoughts? We look forward to reading your comments, and thank you for watching.